What's good, Cubers? It's your boy, Matt, and I'm back today. It's card of the week time. Since rotation is coming upon us, I've been looking at Dominaria and Ixalan cards because I'm thinking about putting a shopping list video together for you guys so you can be looking for these cards post-rotation. And in the process, I forgot about and came across one of my favorite cube ads from Ixalan, so I thought we'd talk about him today. Let's get started. The card of the week this week is Rampaging Ferocidon. For two and a red, you get a 3-3 three, three dinosaur. You should just always play dinosaurs. That should be a cube rule. It has menace and players can't gain life. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. To really get how good this card is, we're going to look at it piece by piece. And number one, if you watch my videos, you know I highly value Menace. I think it's a, just a fantastic sleeper ability. Rampaging Ferocidon comes down on turn three, swings in on turn four, and most of the time your opponent simply can't block it profitably. In order to block Ferocidon, they have to put two creatures in front of it, which means you're in the red aggro deck and something else you control, maybe a couple something else's you control, are still going to get in for damage. And because he's a 3-3, he's going to eat at least one of his blockers. Or the other scenario happens and they can't block him at all because they've only got one creature on the field because you've bolted the others off the field or you've path to exiled something because you're in Boros aggro. The point is, he's really hard to block on turn four, and that's what you want in a red aggro deck. Players can't gain life. We'll talk about that in a second. Hold that in the back of your mind. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon is going to ping that creature's controller. Now, it does count you, but you're the red aggro deck. You just don't care about your life total. Your life total means nothing to you. All right, spray and pray, damage and swinging, you don't care but your opponent's life total matters <laughs> and frequently your opponent doesn't want to shock in their lands when they're playing against the red aggro deck which should let you know that all you need is two points of damage off Ferocidon's uh, third ability and you're coming to the good and a lot of times it's almost like having an extra lightning bolt on the field and if your opponent is in some kind of token deck and they're casting lingering souls every time they do that they shock themselves and they have to use both the tokens to block Ferocidon so Again, Ferocidon is just great with that third ability. And I want you to realize that the life gain isn't nothing either. There are some incidental life gain cards in Q. Bane Slayer, Angel, Blood Artist, and other Blood Artist effects. Obstinate Balhoth still sees some play. And all of these cards are terrifying for the burn deck because life gain is just your enemy. Every time your opponent gains three, four life, they've time walked you and you need another turn to put them down. And Ferocidon just blanks all of these strategies. I can't tell you how many times I've been playing Burn in Standard and Lyra Dawnbringer just comes down and I just want to cry. Which is why I play Tybalt in the sideboard. You have to have something to turn off life gain. Well, now you've got something in your cube that gives the Burn player hope against Baneslayer Angel when she comes down. Yes, she does put them on a quick clock, or she stops a lot of the aggression, but at least her life gain doesn't just end the game for the burn player anymore. They have one answer inside your cube. Blood Artist, ugh, I don't want to talk about how bad that feels when you're in burn. The good news for him is at least you can shock him. Obstinate Balhoth is just a giant 4-4 wall that gains you life. Ugh, feels bad. Just feels so bad and if you're in like a Rakdos aggro deck and you make them discard him oh that's that's the worst that's the absolute worst so Ferocidon is an incidental answer to these type of effects and he's good enough to cube without stopping the life gain but you'd be surprised that that is occasionally a really relevant upside of Ferocidon so let's take a look at the current three drops that are played in red at least the most popular ones Gutter Snipe, Goblin Rabble Master, and Legion War Boss, which is a weaker Rabble Master uh, variant, are the most popular three drops in red in cube. And what that says to me is, one, there's plenty of room here for Ferocidon already, right? Like, your, your cube probably needs more than three uh, red three drops. This is just the cube tutor average. So Ferocidon can fit right in here, along with maybe one other three drop for like an artifact deck, like PNLR, although I love Ferocidon way more than I like PNLR. Gutter Snipe is in here for the spells deck. I don't think Ferocidon can have his spot simply because 
Gutter Snipe serves the purpose in a different deck. Rabble Master and War Boss are both aggro cards though. These are the kind of cards that Ferocidon is trying to compete for a slot in your cube. And there's a bunch of different Rabble Master variants with Rabble Master being the best. War Boss is another, Najila, Hanwar Garrison. War Boss has actually played his way out of my cube. I know that he's in the cube tutor average, but I find his two power defense just gets him turned off a lot that he can't swing in pretty quickly. And I've opted to start playing a different card in his place, and that's Krinko, the 10 Street Kingpin. I'm really surprised how much in my own personal cube that when he swings in and becomes a 2 3, that that 3 toughness just really seems to matter. But again, I still think there's plenty of room here for the Rampaging Ferocidon. In fact, if you're running three or four different Rabble Master variants, I encourage you to pull one and just try out the Ferocidon. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So, let's go back and look at our guy real quick. Ferocidon is a solid card. It's a great include. The 3-3 power toughness, all really good. I haven't even mentioned the best part, though. This card is banned in standard, which sucks. I want to play it in standard, but it means it's a dirt cheap cube ad for you. This card is 50 cents. 50 cents for a really, really solid red three drop. In terms of overall cube grade, I think it's a solid B. I definitely think you include this card in your cube. You don't have to. It's not a staple of the color or of the archetype, but it is a really fun and interesting addition. I don't know that I want to play four Rabble Master variants. I think I would like to mix it up and just have a little something else woven in there for my players. So Rampaging Ferocidon, solid B, give the card a try. I think it'll add a little spice to your cube life. Well, that's going to do it for today, Cubers. I do want to take a minute and give you guys a shout out. We're up like 50 something followers in the last couple of weeks. It's just, it's a big deal for us. We appreciate your participation in our channel and watching our content. I started making these videos just for me. I never actually expected anyone to watch them. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe comment below to let me know that you appreciate all of us here. Follow us on the Twitter at Cube for Two. And as always, and until next time, shuffle up and keep cubing, my friends.